Hey everybody, Rubicon here with a Total War Three Kingdoms 8 Princes DLC SEMA U campaign. Kicking it off, thanks to Creative Assembly for giving me access. 25% chance of capturing enemy officers post-battle with SEMA U, plus 15 melee evasion for melee infantry, faction-wide. That'll be very helpful. And we get a diplomatic attitude bonus with most factions. We also have an influence metric, so... When we play with him, the higher we get, we get decreased construction cost, increased research rates. We also get special assignments to help us out with that. So as the campaign goes on, we'll get those. Influence does decrease if we lose, so we need to be very strategic there. And we do also just have a general decay over time. So if we sit around and do nothing, we start losing our influence. We do have some good units here. The Zhu Raiders, Shock Infantry, they have a great charge. We get those at level 3, and then at level 6... We get the Warriors of Zhu, high health and a positive for missile defense. So great frontline infantry. Excited to see them once the campaign gets rolling. We do have the labor building chain as well that helps our population growth, decreases the construction cost. We also have a military emissary position, which decreases recruitment cost as via assignment. And then we also have the provincial advisor, which helps reduce corruption. Always helpful. Then we also have He Lun. A commander. He is a no, one of our noteworthy characters. So Sima Yu, overall, starting off on the eastern part of China. He is a guy, though, where I like this part. Yet when faced with defeat, he will not put his principles before his own survival. So he is much more of a bureaucrat and making sure that the internal government stays constant and trying to secure China and make sure that peace and order reign. So we will have to be careful with our starting point. We do start at war with a couple, with the faction right to our left. And so we'll have to expand west and be smart about that. So let's dive right in.政令之下是否包存兵库我等是否应当听令诸侯众王是为黎民苍生还是一己私令不言而喻一目了然众人必须如此走我亦不得已而为之武帝驾崩之后晋朝江山传到了武帝之子惠帝手中有人认为当今圣上不配天命也有人认为可借机挟控天子其昏聩无能以致太后统摄朝政任意操纵摄事卫生的天子然而主公如今刚既废绝
骨肉同宗，自相残杀。诸侯不尊礼教，妄为人臣，我定当讨贼戡乱，一平四海。西南有司马直，纠集大军，作乱一方，与主公为敌。虽是敬事宗卿，也不能放任其犯上作乱。我定要力保朝廷安宁。主公虽然位高权重，在南方也有人呼应。但是主公还应立即行动，领兵擒王。我正有此意。讨灭乱贼之后，我将举兵西征，进京擒王。若是万不得已，我将亲自出马，以身保卫陛下。拯救天下危亡者，非主公莫属。主公应当讨尽奸贼，都统天下。That was awesome. The staring down the trebuchet, the flaming shot, that was pretty cool. But anyway, the Imperial Court is threatened, both from external forces and internal corruption. The princes are beginning to devour themselves in the quest for power. Yet before you can aid the Emperor, you must remove this direct threat before you. Army right in front of us. Crush the army swiftly. Right there, Luo Luban. We get a plus three might alignment, which is a different mechanic. That's our influence right there. We are currently inferior influence, so we will... Build that up as we go through. Right now, extra construction cost, negative research rate, and higher upkeep plus additional corruption. We can do the wealth alignment. We can go there, which gets us additional income. Might gives us more movement range. Research rate, spirit, also gives us prestige. So we have the option. Uh, like I said, mine gives us a little bit more research, and we'll get into there. So we do have a court. We can select an advisor right off the bat. Which will give us some options here. So we do have our faction heir, Sima P, right here. He will be a champion. He's currently 16. We have my brother, apparently, Sima Mo. And then my wife, Princess Pei. So we already have a 16 year old son. Very, very nice. So let's see who we can put in the advisor position. I'd like to do He Lun or my wife, Princess P. So let's see here. So if we put him in there, we get plus seven satisfaction, negative, or plus 10, excuse me, retinue upkeep. So don't want to increase my cost this early, but we do get charge speed and a bonus to campaign movement range. So not terrible. We also get a spirit alignment per turn, which, okay. I mean, I can, it's not bad. Plus three satisfaction, not that great. Plus 10 satisfaction for Princess P, plus one starting rank for all units. That's very helpful. Plus 15% income from peasantry as well. So she's probably the better option. I also get plus one wealth, which I think that's the direction I'm going to head just because having more money never hurt anybody, especially in Three Kingdoms. So we're going to confirm that, plus they're harmonious and they get along. So we'll do that. We'll get to the battle in just a second. We can actually, in, in the Eight Princes, we can manipulate our tax level right away, which is kind of nice, but I don't have to do that at this instant. We also can check out our diplomacy. We're at war with Sima Ji. He's the faction that I mentioned to the left. So we do have the war right away there. Let's see, trade agreements. Who's got the best? Uh, Sima Jian has the most money available. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that just because he has the best one and He's bigger, too, so if I can keep him happy, then that will behoove me. So let's see let's see how much money I can get out of this. We will go 300. Oh, actually, that's pretty close. Uh, 297, 327. We're just haggling. What about 310? Perfect. All right, so I will take the money. Thank you very much. Goal for the series is about 30-minute episodes, maybe an hour here or there, depending on how things are going. Also, please leave suggestions or comments, feedback in the comment section down below. And please don't forget to subscribe if you like what the channel is producing as far as content. And I also have a couple other series going on right now. So we will take out Sima Ji first. He's got that commander right there, Pen Shang. I do have Dong Hai, so that's where my trade partner is. We also have Reform Choice pending. And I can also take a look at the city real quick. I have a fishing port right away, so I'll have to build that up. And then let's also take a look at ancillaries. So let's 
get those popped in before we go into battle. That's always awkward if you forget to do that. So, okay, pretty nice weapon. 30 melee attack rate, base damage of 2.8k, and 1.4 armor piercing damage. Not shabby at all. So, expertise, hey, that's right up your alley. So we'll give you the builder, and then instinct is melee damage, which also... You do need that as a sentinel. I don't have anything for you at the moment. You do have stone bulwark. That's nice. So that will make everybody unbreakable plus 100% range block chance. So with cavalry, that will be very helpful. So without further ado, let's jump in and see here. So I've got the Zhu Raiders and the Axe Warband, some anti-archer cavalry and some archers myself. So let's dive on in. And decisive victory. Let's fight it. I want to see CMU in action. I feel like if this was a musical, this would be right where he breaks into a big number. This is my chance. That's, that's, that's a perfect intro to like a hero song. I mean, let's be real here. All right, so group up the archers, take you off of skirmish mode since you're going behind the infantry. And then this is going to be pretty straightforward. We have assault troops, so... We're not going to mince anything here. Put the cavalry out on the wings. And then it's just going to be a... Get in front. Come on. Lead by example, man. Lead by example. So we'll group them up. And take you out. Group you guys. And then we're just going to... This is going to be pretty straightforward. We're just going to move forward. Try to get the cavalry around the side. I wonder if they'll want to do a Sentinel and Sentinel Duel. Adamant Resolve, plus 50 melee evasion, that will come in quite handy. Again, he has Stone Bulwark. So, let's see, as we get closer, they're just doing their thing. And I think that, make, that, that makes him and everyone else unbreakable. I don't know. I'll have to check. I'm not sure if he is to break unbreakable at the moment. They do get that eventually as commanders. I'm just not sure if he starts with it or if he only gets it when he activates that. She doesn't want to fight me, which understandable, but I'll just have to attack her directly then. Except let's let's have you come back here with everybody else, mostly because I'd like to pop that buff right away. Let's have you at a trot. All right, so they're trying to shift their lines to get up there. So we'll try to keep we'll keep swinging the cavalry around, see if we can force them to commit to one side, and then hit them with everything we got from the other side. So that's not going to help me a ton yet. Uh, and so let's get you back there, everybody. Sorry, I forgot to select. Forgot to select the commander. That would have been that would have been helpful. So it's only a twenty second duration. Um, all right, so, yeah, you should win that, all right, even against a Sentinel, that's pretty interesting. But let's get you in there, go ahead and take them out. Uh, you, you guys are out of range, so it's not going to make much of a difference. Let's get the cavalry, you're going to slam into the Saber Militia, and then here comes the Axe Band. That archer unit's already breaking, so archers fire on the other one. Let's pull you back out. Because you guys are technically anti-missile, you're not anti-infantry, but you're about to slam into them, so they're on the verge of breaking. Archers, focus on them. You hit up that Saber Militia, now that they are breaking, should be able to do that pretty nicely. Man, that duel is not moving at all. They are pretty even in health. So let's put you over there. Archers, you fire on them, especially since they're reforming. Then let's get the... Oh, boy. Oh, this is going to be... Oh, crap. This is going to be one of those duels where they're fairly even, and so they're just going to take forever. But to tilt the odds in our favor, let's get CMU back over there so he can use melee evasion for the duel. Cavalry. Uh, chase those archers down. But my archers keep firing at them. They're starting to run out of ammo, so 
just get in there as much as you can. We'll wipe out the rest of their troops. Man, you all of a sudden you're taking your time. Yeah, that, I'm actually concerned about this duel now. This is that probably was not the best idea. Hopefully, he'll get a ton of experience out of it. I'm not quite. Sure. I, I've actually haven't really looked into that yet. If they win duels, if they become more experienced than if they just got a ton of kills in the battle. But take your time, dude. Seriously, your buddy needs you. Get on over there. All right, so cavalry's almost there. So let's put them in. Archers, stop firing. Don't want to hit our own guys. Yeah, they're going to mop that up. All right, let's get that melee. Man, they are close. So plus 50 melee evasion should help with that. Let's come back over here while that's going on. They'll get wiped up pretty quickly. So we've routed the rest of their forces. Everybody get in there. Okay, the rest of their forces are done. So there's nobody left to fight. So let's come on over here for the duel. Oh gosh, this is going down to the wire. I do not like this at all. This will be really, really, really embarrassing if he dies in the first battle. That would just be... I would just need to do a head desk after that. But he is... He's going for it. So we have... That makes us unbreakable. I'm just going to pop it. Even though it doesn't really... I, I, I'm not worried about getting shot at. I just want to make sure he doesn't run away. Just in case he gets tired. Because he's very tired. 20 seconds for that. She's exhausted. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. 11 seconds. Gosh, this is... This is going to be close. 5 seconds. 4, 3, 2, 1. They are really close in health. Pop that. Get 20 seconds of additional melee evasion. We'll zoom on in. They are just going at it. Oh, boy. Alright, let's, let's get even closer here if we can. I'm not going to go into cinematic mode just because I need to keep that able to pop because I think that's going to be the difference between me winning this duel and losing it. So we're just parrying now. Little wind attack there. Ooh, kick to the face. That's got to hurt. I mean, they're just parrying each other for the most part at this point. Nobody's really... Okay, you got a couple blows there. A couple body blows. 30 seconds until I can hit melee evasion again. Adamant resolve. Oh, boy. So, he is... He pulled in front. So, I think we are going to win this. It's just going to be incredibly, incredibly close. They're just... Are, 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 is that... I, I wonder... Are they getting tired and that's just all they're doing to each other now? Is they're just using that, that little wind attack thing? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Three seconds, two seconds, one. We're going to pop out of that resolve again. Oh my gosh. This is the longest duel ever. Push her away. Yeah. We have this in the bag unless something majorly goes wrong. I don't think she has any abilities to use. So let's, let's bring it around here. Get a, get a side angle. There we go. Get as close as we can. Without going directly into cinematic mode. I'd like to see what his finishing move is. I honestly don't think I've ever really watched the conclusion of a duel with a commander. He tried to stab her in the face right there. Oh gosh, and she's she's not going down easy though. 35 seconds or so until I can pop another Adamant Resolve. Hopefully it won't get to that. Let's move the camera a little bit here. Try to get a better angle. It is going down to it. Come on. Finish her off. Oh, jeez. This is ridiculous. I'm going to hate myself if this ends up being a loss. I mean, she's not going to live long if, if, if it is a loss on his part, because he is right there. All right, five seconds until we can pop that. Just finish her off, please. I'm begging you. Two, one, pop it. Okay, he got it. He, well, I guess melee evasion includes getting kicked in the face. Oh, come on. Oh, gosh. 
crying out loud. Don't get kicked in the face. Hit her. Okay, okay. That was to the chest and then a slice across the face. So you get style points for how you finished there. But my goodness, that was... Whew. That was a lot closer. Duly noted, you are not a good duelist, even if you do have a lot of advantage. So we're going to back off on having you do that. And slam them to the ground. Only lost 97 men in total, so pretty good. Ransom, replenishments. Um, only lost 97, so I'd get exactly 10 men back. So don't really need the money, though. So we'll do that. So we have destroyed the traders, plus three might alignment, 500 treasury. Very nice. The Empress demands that the traders be crushed. So Wei Guan and Sima Liang, former regents of the realm, are traitors and to be arrested. You have been tasked by the Empress with dealing with these nearby allies. How do you vigorously pursue them? So in this campaign, you choice, have choices that can influence your alignment in one of four ways, which in turn can affect what happens at key points of the campaign. So we can do build. We can raise troops, we can build our reserves, or we can conquer. So I'm going to shoot for the wealth alignment, I think, just because that increases income in general. Wealth or mind, just because that boosts research. Spirit alignment, extra diplomatic, never hurt anybody, but I'm also not too keen on that. I'll just not be a jerk and take care of what I need to. So we can invest in the mind or the wealth. So those are kind of my two options here. Let's build our reserves. We're going to go with that. So build my reserve. What is my mission? I need to gather money. So I need to have a treasury of 4,500 at the start of my turn. Well, that's going to be pretty close, actually. That's going to be close because... We'll be right there. So let's go ahead and grab the farmland. It's a superior, or a decisive victory, so we have our superior forces there. Lost 235. I can live with that. So we will occupy that. That boosts our income. Yeah, we're definitely in the clear now as far as getting that mission accomplished next turn. So we'll clear these off right here. And then we do also need to look at our reforms. Uh, you don't have anything to level up. I don't have anything to give you. We could also upgrade some stuff over here. So let's take a look at the city. We could in increase the fishing ports, get a better garrison there, plus food production. We could also go there. Um, let's take care of the reform first, though. So this is the old-fashioned tech tree that everybody, I think, is more used to. You just pick a technology, and then over the course of the turns, it it researches it. It's not like a reform in the base game where you just, every five turns, you get one. Here, you decide where you're going. It's, it's inverted, basically. So we could do the military households, get more units, which would be spears, which would be very helpful. Uh, research, so... Those two will give us units down the line. Get the Lance Cavalry and that tree. The Onyx Dragons. Uh, I love those guys. So then here we have the Yellow Dragons, Light Axe Infantry, Heavy Cavalry, the J Dragons. And then all the way down here, Defenders of Earth, the Oil Soaked Arrows. That would be a bad day if you got by one of those. And then the Glaive Infantry, Protectors of Heaven. And then over here, the Azure Dragons. I like those guys for flank flank security. They have the spears so they can fight off cavalry, plus they're an archer unit as well, a hybrid unit. So to start, trade influence would be helpful, just because I only have one trade agreement I can do right now, but I also don't have a ton of people to really trade with, or I might not for very long, depending on how aggressive people get. So I'm going to go with the military households just to get access to spear units and slightly better archers. So we'll do that. And then I could recruit... I'll need some frontline troops. So the Dow Swords, Swordsmen will get... Sword Guards, excuse me, will get them. And I do need more cavalry for him. And I also need spears to round out this army. 
just for flank protection. I don't have a strategist yet, so I do want to get in there. Mostly for the trebuchets. Trebuchets are your friend, but we'll end the turn. Can't really build because I need the money for the mission. So definitely cleared that. Plus five wealth alignment, very nice. Spend or save. Some time ago you gave the Empress your word that you would sequester funds for the war effort. She comes to you now demanding the money be delivered in full. How do you answer her demand? So we have three options. We can give what, we, what was asked, which gets a spirit, diplomatic, don't really care. Uh, give some of what was asked, plus five wealth alignment, only a thousand to the treasury, and say, get lost, plus five might, but we're out of favor. Um, we'll get... We'll go in favor. I'm not going to put too much into spirit, but I prefer to be in favor and not take too many people off in the early game. Let's see. If we increase that, since we have some money left over, we lose noble support. We could get a better garrison there, but that's not the end of the world. Plus 50 food production, plus income. Uh, I think we'll probably go this route just to get the extra income. Yeah, because I'm not at war with you, and I have a non-aggression pact, and you're my trade partner, so I'm going to try to be friends with you as best I can. So we're, we're going to go with commerce, and I have plenty of food, so that's not really a problem. So, let's see. Don't really have the money for anybody at the moment. And the garrison's increasing the influence and the public order. So we'll probably just hang out there. We'll see what he does, too. If he comes at me, then I have the garrison on my side. But let's see what's over here, too. Oh, sworn. Good job. My wife and I are oath sworn with each other. I guess that's better than the alternative. So we'll see what happens here. He didn't go anywhere. So, the road to the capital mission issued, reached the faction rank Grand Prince. So, let's take a look at this. So, we do have Minor Prince, Prince, Grand Prince, Imperial Prince, and Victorious Prince. The ultimate victory, reach the rank of Victorious Prince, then annex or destroy all other major factions. So, those are the only ones. Simo Wee is the only one I've met. And then you can also do Emperor and Regent. This is a bit of a different structure, so you're almost kind of consolidating power. You can either just go after it. When you get the Grand Prince, achieving this rank will give you a small chance each turn. Let's see, unlocks the option of diplomatically annexing the Jitten Empire if it is your vassal. Okay, Victorious Prince, win the campaign at that level. Campaign's rank will be extremely difficult without first season control of the Imperial Capital. Got it. So, pretty much need to get as far as Imperial Prince, then take over the capital at the very latest, but we'll see how things unfold. So, we're building public order there. That's good. Can't really do a ton there. There's the temple to fill out the commandery, and then there's also the large town down there. Let's see, can we get a strategist? Yes, we can. 1450, you bring two archers to the party. Let's do it. So, don't have the money, need to get Trebuchet next turn, that will be clutch. I don't think, and I'll probably switch, I'll keep the archers for now with the commander retinue, but for now, let's see, 100% chance of ambush. For now, we'll just leave them in there. They don't have any archers in that army, so they're probably not going to come on out. Let's zoom in here, how close can we leave the settlement? Right there, 70% chance. 70% chance all around of ambush. So I could pop into ambush stance here and kind of give him the illusion that it's open, and then if I can catch them in an ambush, that will be a rain of arrows upon their head. Let's see, Ranger's outfit. Swo Yin Ming. I don't really have much use for that at the moment. Ah, I might want to give it to my wife. So. I'll reject it for now. Alright, so let's give my 
Love the bride, construct three buildings. Okay, wealth and mind, got it. Let's give my lovely wife that piece of armor, except you have better armor. And you do too. So, there goes that idea. I should have taken the money because I have no use for that whatsoever. All right, so let's put you in normal stance. Let's recruit uh, Trebuchet. Excellent. And if you're not going to move, I think I'm just going to... I'm going to see if I go up there. How long will it take me to get... Let's see. Can I go much further? 100% chance of ambush. So we'll pop into ambush here. I think my reinforcement range should cover the farmland. If he tries to go there, eh, actually, let's just let's just make for it. We'll see what he does. If he comes after the farmland, I've, I've got him out in the open. And if he doesn't do anything, doesn't go anywhere, then I'll just keep on heading to the temple. So, family tree. Apparently, I have a brother now. That's cool. That's all my, all my friends. Let's see, where was the ancillary? Where did I? No, never mind. I was hoping to see if it told me who I was trading with, because I'll be honest, I, I forgot. Except you are a minor prince, so you're over there. Let's see, who was who was it that wanted it? It was a sentinel, so I'll probably get the most money from them. Is it anybody I don't think it's anybody that I've seen. Jin Empire's over here. Uh it was you, that's who it was. So let's see, trade an ancillaries, armor. I got three of them. Jeez. All right, so we'll trade. I want money from you. Make this work. 443. Perfect. I might have enough money now to switch out some of the archers. Let's take a look at this. Um, uh, I could. I don't have enough for front line. I think here let's let's close out this. I want to swap them out. Yes, I can swap out one for a spear and then I can recruit an archer unit to replace that. And so they'll they'll muster as we end the turn. And you're going to the temple leaving the town exposed. Can I reach it in one turn? Yes, I can. Let's see, a question of character. You wander across two periods, like any discussion. Compassion, one argues, is the most meritorious virtue, whilst the other insists that righteousness drives all action. Uh, satisfaction with... Okay, so you actually... Whoever you side with, you lose satisfaction with the other for a long time. So if I agree with my wife, I get spirit, which... Or it could be neither, which gets me the mind. It makes me popular. Mind is research rate. As we head towards that. Uh, let's see. Or I could do wealth. For one piece of gold, I could flip a coin. And decide that way. Get more towards wealth. Uh, spirit, again, I really don't care that much about it. So mind alignment and wealth is where I want to go. We're going to say neither, though. So we're going to get plus five mind and I am popular. This is why I'm popular. All right, so we're going to head down here, take out the large town. It is a decisive victory, and we'd have to wait a turn to have them start taking attrition, so we'll just go ahead and take it. Only lost 151. Totally fine with that. And we will occupy it. So we have the large town. Dual war axes, nice. And a military great axe, also not bad. That's more for a champion. Maybe I'll save those for Simi, my, my son, Simi Yu, or Sima P, excuse me. I'll save those for him. Question of character, mind alignment, ancillaries gain. Influence is still pretty low, but it's increasing. I am popular and I'm in favor at the moment. So we are gonna head north and take out that last temple bit right there. I can also use the money I just got from the conquest to swap out them. And I can't afford 
frontline units. Do I want to do that though, or should I get a second trebuchet? Because I don't quite have enough money. I need like 30, 35 gold in order to get the trebuchet, or I could get another archer unit. Uh, decisions, decisions, decisions. Love to know what you guys would do in this situation. Is it better to, do you guys like to build up your artillery and missile troops first and then take care of the frontline troops? The, the spears are non-negotiable. I need those to protect the flank against cavalry, especially because his army has cavalry in it. So that's got to happen. Um, those are nice, but rather expensive. I'm going to go with archers, just get them, because I'll have enough potentially with my income. Cross, do I want crossbows? There's really no armor at this point in the game. So, at least that I'm dealing with. So, take care of the archers there. And then I don't have enough for them, but I will have one room for either of them next turn. So, I can send somebody on assignment to Songju, your satisfaction's a little low. I could get influence. She could supervise construction. She could also do industrial exploitation. That's not bad. The, the supervised construction one would be very handy, except I'm just not building anything at the moment. So other, other than reducing the building upkeep, it's not going to do me much good at this point. I could get noble support with him. Let's boost the peasantry income by 50%. Never hurt to boost that up. Plus it gives him something to do. So we will end the turn. Let's see if Simaji does anything interesting. He stayed put. So the Jin Empire declares war on Sima Liang. Character developments, people of merit available. The lodge is done. Excellent. And diplomacy already saw that. So I can start heading up towards him. I would like to build up my army a little bit further first. I have enough money for a second trebuchet, so I'm going to get that just to let that start building up as they muster. I don't have enough then for frontline troops. I'm going to need to get one eventually, probably before I wander into his territory too far. So we're going to go to the border. We're going to pop into ambush stance. We will wait and see what he does. If he, he might try, again, I'm hoping he tries to come after one of my settlements. I'm also pretty close to getting Prince, so with 10 more Prestige, I'll attain that rank. And then we'll go up to Gucter. I'm sorry, I'll get Grand Prince at that point, finish out that rank. So we're going to go for him, and I think that's where we are going to end it for now. Again, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. This is Rubicon signing off from Total War Three Kingdoms. We'll see you next time.